what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's good, people? What's up? It's me. Y'all know who I'm Mel. Who I am? I'm Mel Teddy 27, you know? It's like down here somewhere. Mm. And this is going to be another retro review. And this is our review for Noah's Ark. Season 1. Episode 9. This is the season finale. And the title of this episode. What is the title of this? I always forget. Y'all supposed to be working on me with this. Anyway, the title of this episode is Got Till It's Gone. That's the title. Got Till It's Gone. You know, it's up here somewhere. You know, I... Listen. Anyway, it's a lot to unpack in this season finale, okay? Um... Yeah, let's get right down to it because I got a lot to say. And looking back at it now, older, I have a lot of questions that I didn't necessarily have back then. So let's let's delve in. Let's delve in and dive in to it. So we start off with Noah and Wade out house hunting. Okay. So Wade is doing this whole we just homeboys thing again with that um house hunter. And because the lady was like, We have two master bedrooms, so you don't have to um try to figure out who's going to get the bigger room and um no one tries to say oh we only need one and he was like yeah because and so wade tried to you know dress it up and say oh yeah because we already decided who's going to get the master bedroom so wade is still not completely comfortable with putting all that out there but it's a process it's a process and like like i've been saying during these reviews i don't think noah allowed wade to have his own time to process everything and go through the the whole progress of you know being comfortable with his sexuality he just wanted to force everything so then um noah kind of gets upset and says you know while they're talking how do you like how do we get to this point you were supposed to be staying with me for a couple days and now we out here house hunting and you can't even tell the lady that we're a couple but you want us to be all booed up and living together how are we gonna live together and we don't even um you can't even accept the fact that we're a couple. So Noah, you can tell, is already not feeling Wade at this point. He's just not on the same wavelength. Living together has shown Noah that there are parts and aspects of Wade that he's still not fully okay with and comfortable with. And um, we'll get there. We'll get there. Anyway, when um, Wade goes to talk to the lady um, and... No, I'm sorry. Wade and Noah, uh, not Wade, Noah goes off on Wade and so forth. And Noah tries to call Ricky. That's what it was. And Ricky didn't answer. So Rick, Noah calls Ricky's shop. Raphael is there. Raphael says Ricky's not here. Noah says, where is he? I've been trying to reach him all day. Raphael said, listen, he went to a sex party. That's all I know. Can You want the address? And Noah was like, uh, yeah. Now, see right here, I have questions. First of all, this is where it went left for me. Because first of all, why is Ricky always the first one Noah calls? Ricky, we know, gives the worst advice. Anything Ricky says, most times, you do the opposite, okay? Why is he the first one you always call? I do not understand that at all. That I don't understand at all. And if Ricky didn't answer the phone, you couldn't just call Alex? You couldn't just call Chance? I'm just saying. Ricky, you're getting advice from the one who never sees it for a relationship. The one who don't know nothing about keeping a relationship. The one who's sleeping with anything with a hole and a dick. That's the one you want to go to for advice first. Not the two people who are in relationships. You don't want to talk to those two people. You want to talk to the two people, to the one person that ain't trying to be in a relationship, don't know nothing about keeping a man or anything like that, and just broke up with somebody who was great for him. That's the one you want to talk to. Make it make sense. Then, let's talk about you wanted the address to a sex party. Hello. Now, I'm going to say this. If you've been friends with Ricky this long, this ain't Ricky's first sex party. One. Two, if Ricky's your friend, he done told you what goes down at a sex party. He done told you how sex parties go. Because that's what you do when you're, when you're with your friends. You talk about what you do and y'all have that conversation. So, at a sex party, there's a couple rules at a sex party. One. Ain't no wallflowers at the sex party. Boo, everybody's participating. So if you're going to see a sex party, bitch, you going there, you're going to get naked, you're going to take off your clothes, and shit is about to go down. Three, why would you think that a sex party would be the perfect place for him to have this conversation with him? Like, make it make sense. You're going to go up in the sex party, and while he's getting bust down or busting somebody down, you're going to throw up this conversation about Wade? Make it make sense. Like, I didn't understand the whole need to go to the sex party. If, Wade, if um, Alex was uh, not Alex, if Ricky was unavailable, 
you got two other friends. Who will give you better advice? I just get, make it make sense. Anyway, when Noah confronts Wade about the whole, you know, how did we get here situation, um, you know, Wade kind of gets mad and storms off and so forth. Ciao, a mess. At down to the sex party, Ricky is there and he's blowing off everybody. You know, guys, because Ricky's an attractive guy. Ricky has body, body, yada, yada, body. Ricky has a sexy face. You know, I don't know what he got going on down under, but, you know, with the likes of all of the dudes that he be banging out, because thug dudes like dudes with big stuff. I'm just trying to let you know. Thug dudes, you know, the, the, the boys that deal with boys, they don't want you to know. They don't like little bitty peen. They like shoulder boulder mountain holders, okay? They like dick of death, cock of doom, okay? So, being that Ricky is always, you know, having sex with these guys, you, one can probably imagine that he probably is working with a nice, you know, slab of beef. He might be built like a tripod. Anyway, all of that works out well at a sex party, okay? Body, face, and dick. You got the, you know, trifecta. So, he's turning down all of these guys. Then he sees this Hispanic guy that he thinks is Janito, but he's only sees him from the back. He pulls this guy and says, Janito, what are you doing here? And he looked, and it's not Janito. And he was like, fuck. And so, he realizes that, damn, I'm in here fucking around with these, uh, you know, these motherfuckers that I should be my ass with. Janito, I know I love him. I know I want to be with him. So, why am I fucking off? So then Ricky, um, Noah then comes to the sex party, okay? Um, the worker at the door, you know, the guy who take your uh, money, who you pay the money and he give you your little bag. Now, see, this was different from most sex parties. Because most sex parties, they have it like in the hotel room and the person at the door, you come in, they let you go to the little bathroom right there and get changed. But they give you your little um, bag with your number on there and you put your clothes in the bag and then you come get your um, clothes from them when you leave. I mean, I don't really know. This is what I've heard. This is what I've heard from people. <laughs> anyway, but the guy who was working the door, some chocolate bruh with long dreads or whatever. Um, he tells um, Noah, you know, it's $10, so forth. Noah said, oh, I'm not here to um, get with nobody. I'm just looking for my friend. He was like, all right, well, you know, we got little private rooms, whatever you need to do. If you see something you like. Noah goes in. When Noah goes in, Alex, not Alex, Lord, Ricky comes out. They never even see each other. Ricky gets his armband, uh, you know, cut off because that is the requisite at a sex party. You do get an armband or if it's one of the ghetto sex parties, they'll take a little permanent marker and write the number for your bag on your wrist or on your um hand so you know what number you got for your bag. I don't know, you know, I'm, I, although I, I do know of ones where what they do is your uh, bag gets attached to a playing card. And all you have to do is remember like, oh, I had the two of diamond or I had the ace of spade or I had the three of club. And that's how you know your bag. But that's what somebody told me. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway. So Ricky and Noah never even see each other. They never even see each other. Noah goes into the sex party. Ricky goes outside, gets in the car, and calls Janito from the parking lot. Because he's, but Janito ain't answering, honey. Janito's not here for him. Janito say, baby, you ain't want no parts of me. Don't be thinking I'm going to answer this good phone call, honey. Nope, we're not doing that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We're not doing it. And I don't blame Janito. Baby, you don't want nothing to do with me. I don't want nothing to do with you. How about that? Anyway. Um... Back down to the sex party. Noah goes in there and this tall, sexy piece of something. I told y'all I like my man tall and skinny. So this tall, skinny guy came up to Noah. He was real sexy. Baby, he would have bust me down right there in the middle of the floor, honey. I would have been putting footprints on ceilings right there. We wouldn't have went nowhere. Baby, we would have put on a show and I would have ran a clinic for the girls up in the sex party. You hear me now? You hear me now? You hear me now? Anyway. So he's turning the guy down like, no, 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 I'm not here for that. And so conveniently, dude from the door, sex party uh, worker at the door comes up and says, he said, no, let him go. But then ceremoniously, you hit on him. And when no one tells you no, you keep pushing. So make that make sense. I guess you don't accept no from him. But the other dude was supposed to accept no. Child, make it make sense. Anyway, they get they hook up. No one gets bust down by the dude. So they have sex. Yes, just that easy. Just that easy. Now, Noah, Noah, it should not have been that easy. Mm -mm. Not if you claim you're here just looking for your friend. That was way too easy, Noah. Way too easy. Way too easy. 
Like, even me, who's a whole ass whore, I'm going to make you work a little bit for it. Even though the tall dude probably wouldn't have worked, had to work for it. But I wouldn't have been in a whole ass relationship at a goddamn sex party. That's where you went wrong, first of all. You, ain't, you don't go to a sex party if you're in a whole ass relationship. I'm sorry. Anyway. Noah gets home and Wade wants to, you know, make amends for, you know, upsetting Noah earlier. And Wade done cleaned up the apartment. He got candles everywhere and flowers. He done made dinner. You know what I'm saying? He done bought him a new mug after he broke the mug. And he's doing everything that a good boyfriend should do when you know you done made your boyfriend angry. And it's all beautiful and comfortable. And so Noah is in his feelings like, oh, yeah, shit, I just got to get bust down. My asshole is still whistling Dixie. Dear God. But yet my boyfriend done did all of this. Child. Now, I would venture to guess Noah planned on taking that to the grave. Noah planned on telling nobody that he just got bust down. He was going to take that to the grave. Anyway, and then Wade tells Noah, you know, it could be like this all the time if we make this a permanent situation. Meaning, you know, if we do move in together, it could be like this all the time, you know, when we just happy and in a good space. And Noah's feeling some kind of way, child. What's happening is Noah is hearing his booty hole whistling Dixie and feeling jealous. Back down to Alex and Trey's house, they're getting ready to go to this good wedding, okay? Trey got lint all on his um pants and shaving cream on his face. And Alex is just nagging Trey like always. So Alex said, give me these pants. And he, you know, takes the lint brush and starts to try to get the lint off while Wade's in the bathroom wipe, wiping off the shaving cream. Alex goes and wait in the Trey's pocket and he pulls out this um ring box and it looks like an engagement ring and it's engraved on the inside it says i will something like i will always love you or love always trey or whatever and he sees two tickets to south america and immediately jumps to an assumption baby we get down to the wedding venue and alex is setting up because alex you know planned and put together the whole ceremony so he's talking to noah as they're putting stuff together first of all let me say baby that washing set or whatever they they call it that Noah had when his hair was straightened out, baby, was sick, nigga, honey. Baby, that hair was sick. It was laid, honey. I ain't seen hair laid that good since Andre 3000 in the Hey Ya video. Remember that video where Andre 3000 had the perm? And the Hey Ya. Do, 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 hey Ya. That video. Child. Remember how he said it was late, honey? And every time he turned his head, that bob slung to the side like he was one more good Delta girl at her probate saying, you know, her greetings and stuff. You know how the Deltas do when they be at their probate, they be saying their greetings. And every time they turn their head, that bob slung to the side. I be like, yes, I'm here for a yes, bitch. I don't know how I delved out this rabbit hole. I, I'm talking about 14 different subjects at one time. But y'all know what I mean. The hell was laid down to the ground. Okay. Anyway, how did we get off? Oh, okay. So Alex tells Noah, girl, Way about to propose to me. I saw the engagement ring. I saw the two tickets to um to South America, South Africa. He probably gonna propose to me at the um reception. I'm here for it. And Noah's looking like, okay, girl, well, you know, let me know how that works. He was like, y'all worked out what y'all had going on. He was like, yeah, we fine. Sure. Anyway, Noah um Noah then goes to sit down. Noah sits down next to Wade, and you know everything's good. Wade, those white shoes though. Wade, Wade, that tie. With that shirt and jet. I don't know what Wade had on. That shit looked a fucking mess. Especially with those white ass shoes. Now if I'm Noah and my man is coming to a wedding with um that my um and I'm the best man, listen, I'm gonna pick my boyfriend's outfit, okay? Baby, you go on and represent me. You ain't gonna be sitting next to me or standing next to me looking a damn mess. Let me pick out your outfit for you. No, babe, you can't pick out your own. No, let me approve. I'm just saying. Anyway. So they sit next to each other. Noah, like, you know, you're on the wrong side. This Eddie side and not Chance side. Wade was like, oh, I know. While they talking, who comes in and sits right next to Noah? Sex party dude. Okay. This is Bombay Sapphire with Lemonade. Sex party dude who comes in there and sits right next to Noah. Noah is like bathroom. Get something goes to the bathroom. Noah goes in the fucking bathroom. Sex party dude goes in there right after him and is hitting up on him and was like, oh, why are you? He was like, oh, I'm a friend of Chance's. Sex party dude is like, oh, I'm a friend of Eddie's. And he's all getting up, you know, close up on Noah trying to kiss him. And, he, and Noah's like, no, dude, you know. And so uh, sex party worker was like, oh, I felt a connection. I just felt something between us. No, bitch. No, no, no. What you felt, sir, was dick, ass, and bodily fluids. That's what you felt. No connection, boo. 
No, it was like, listen, I, what happened to no strings attached? No, what happened to, you know, we, this is discreet. We do what we do and we keep it going. Bitch, I don't even know your name. And he told him his name. I think it was Malik or something. And they started kissing and making out in the fucking bathroom with your man outside. What the fuck was you thinking about? Girl, there's no, listen, Noah, 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 Noah. Mm -mm. You are not going to get a pass. Your naivete would not give you a pass. Bitch, you done already got bust down by this dude, okay? You supposed to take that shit to the grave, okay? You supposed to never let that story see the light of day. Even with dude coming up, you supposed to act like you don't even know dude, okay? You supposed to be like, what's up, dog? You know, who you here for? Oh, okay. You should have said, oh, we on the wrong side. I thought this was Chance's side. Baby, that's when you were supposed to let dude know. You was like, babe, we on the wrong side. Let's go sit on Chance's side, okay? To let dude know, this is my boyfriend. Don't try, bitch. But you ain't do that. You in the fucking bathroom making out with this whore. I ain't here for it. And what happens while y'all kissing and making out? Wade comes in, sees y'all, and says, they're about to start the ceremony. A mess. A damn mess. Wade sees it all. Baby, during the ceremony, Noah is the best man, so Noah is not even sitting down with Wade. Wade's still sitting down on Eddie's side where he was sitting before. Noah is up in the pulpit. Well, not they had a pulpit, but up there with the, you know, two grooms. Dude from the sex party is sitting next to Wade with the chair in between them where Noah was. Now, sex party dude is a whole ass disrespectful ass fucker. He deserved to get his ass beat. He gonna tell Wade, oh, I ain't know he had a boyfriend, but he is, I can, you can see that he's irresistible, isn't he? Bitch, I would have clocked that bitch right there. Now, I'm not a violent person. I'm not, I'm not someone who always, re, you know, resorts to violence. But bitch, if that's my boyfriend and I just caught you horse kissing in the bathroom and you take your staking ass outside and try to tell me about my boyfriend, talk about, oh, he didn't tell me he had a boyfriend and then tell me how irresistible he is, oh, bitch, I'm beating your ass. Bitch, it's no question. See, Wade, you were way better than me. Because, baby, they would not have been able to finish that ceremony because I would have been beating his ass right then. Girl, once you said, oh, you can see he's irresistible. Bitch, what? Bitch, what? Mm-mm. 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 We ain't playing them games. You would have got your ass whooped. Bitch, you would have got these good drug problems because you would have been drug up and down that um, venue. Anyway, honey. The way lets that go by. The ceremony goes without a hitch. Chances pastor gets up and he, you know, says, I couldn't do it, you know, in my um, own church, but I'm here to support y'all. And I want to give y'all my blessing and my support for y'all union or whatever. So that was good for Chance. Baby Alex then gets up and says, can y'all do one more com um, commitment ceremony? Because I want to propose to Trey. Gets on the knee and proposes to Trey. Um, I saw the ring and the tickets and da, da, da. Will you marry me? Trey looks at him. No. Matter of fact. Boo, I'm going to South Africa to go take care of AIDS um, kids that are infected with AIDS and um, for six months. And I was just um, going to let you know that. I bought you the ring just to let you know that I'm still here for you and I love you and I'm not going anywhere. That's what the ring was for. And so Alex was like, well, you bought two tickets. He's, he was like, yeah, Guy is going as well because Guy is the one who told me about it. He's going with me. And Alex loses it and jumps on Guy and starts wheeling on Guy. Baby, they, start, hey, they have to bring it up. While that's going on, Way bust sex worker dude, sex party dude in the mouth. Bop! And Wade done jumped on sex party dude. Eddie goes over there and breaks it up and said, Wade, you need to stop hitting on my guests. And Wade says, your guest needs to stop sleeping with my boyfriend. And the whole crowd goes, wait, what? Even Alex Ricky and Chester like, bitch, what? You ain't telling us about that no one. You telling us everything else, but you ain't telling us about that whore. Anyway, a mess, a mess. Child, sex party dude uh, then says, well, it was a sex party. It was at a sex party. He he knew what it was. He was down with it. Baby. And that's what Wade said. Boo-boo. Baby, baby, baby. Shark dude. do 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 <laughs> Wade reached back and tried to claw. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, moved. Eddie was in the way. And Eddie gets hit. And Eddie gets knocked out cold. Knocked out cold. Just a mess. Just a damn mess. We got a whole ass melee going on at the wedding, okay? Wade storms out. Next thing we know, they out. They don't call 911. The ambulance that came to cart, you know, Eddie off, you know, in the ambulance. Chance gets in with him to go to the um, hospital. Wade tries to apologize to Chance. Chance ain't trying to hear it, honey. I mean, I can't really blame Chance. This is my wedding. I'm going to my old wedding. He was probably already upset, honey. Just upset. Noah goes to talk to Wade. 
And, you know, he said, oh, your hand looks messed up. I need to get you to the hospital, this, that, and the third. Ricky comes over there talking about, see, that's the problem with these straight dudes. They always, uh, and Noah goes off and says, Ricky, now is not the time, bitch. Bitch, now is not the fucking time. Bitch, you going on over there with your failed ass relationship with Janito. Don't come over here with what I got going on. I do not need your help right now. But, obviously, you do, Noah, because that was the first motherfucker you called. When you have, that's the first motherfucker you always call whenever you got a problem with, um, Wait, so I don't blame uh, Ricky for thinking that he can um, chime in on this relationship because you've proven that you always call Wade first, I mean Ricky first, which is the dumbest shit on earth. Anyway, honey. Sit that back over there. Chance, um, so they all go to the hospital, okay? Wade goes to the hospital with Noah. And then uh, when they get to the hospital, um, at the hospital, wait, did I mean, oh, before they got to the hospital, Trey and Alex talk. Alex says, oh, so you leaving me to go be with God. And Trey is like, no, it's a shame that you, that me going to work with sick kids that have been infected with AIDS to you means that I'm leaving you. I'm not leaving you. I'm leaving for six months. I will be back. We just need some time apart. And I can understand that because they've been together for like seven years. You know, they call it the seven year itch or whatever. And Trey you know, wants to keep this going. And sometimes you do need just a little breathing room, a little space to say, you know what, let me regroup. Excuse me, we're going to come back together. So that way, he he's not, something more catastrophic doesn't happen. Like he doesn't cheat or, you know, breaks it off completely. You know what I'm saying? So that's that. So Alex has to come to terms with that because he's going. Anyway, down to the hospital, Noah is trying to talk to Wade. Wade ain't talking at all. So Noah is like, um, Wade says, listen, don't worry about it. I'm going to move all my shit out your place. And I'll stay in the hotel. Noah then gets mad. And I was like, bitch. Bitch. I know you the fuck lying. See, this is the shit that I hate. You cannot cheat on me. Or you cannot wrong me. And then beat me getting mad. Because they were like, Noah, you the one who fucked up. But you trying to beat Wade getting mad. Like, I was like, bitch, you got a whole lot of fucking nerve calling yourself getting mad. Wade handled it way better than me. Because Wade was like, I don't, I'm not mad at you. I don't hate you. Because he was like, oh, so you hate me now? He was like, no, I don't hate you. Bitch, I love you. And maybe they start crying and all of this, that, and the third. Baby, you knew that was it. That was the breakup right there. Wade lets them finish putting the bandages on him. Checks out a Dodge. Peace. He walks out. He sees Alex, Ricky, and Chance sitting over there in the waiting area. He looks at them. Tears in his eyes and keeps it moving. Noah comes out after him, breaks down. They all go run over there to console Noah. Chance says Eddie has a mild concussion and he's sedated. And they need to get back to the reception to let the guests know that Chance is, that Eddie's okay. Baby, they go back to the um, reception. Ain't nobody there but the servers. And while they're there, the song Remember the Love, which is the theme song for the show. When I dream, oh. I see you and me. That song comes on. And so Chance is like, well, damn, this was supposed to be our wedding song. And they were like, so Ricky asked, says, Chance, why don't, let's dance. And so he said, can we dance? And he asked Chance to dance. And Ricky and Chance dance. And then Alex and Noah dance. But my thing was, wait a fucking minute, Noah. You done broke up with your boyfriend. Bitch, you over here kiki and smiling and dancing like shit is okay. Let me help you understand something. If I break up with my boyfriend like that, knowing I cheated and he broke it off with me and it was all my fault and I didn't see it coming, I'm not over there chumming it up, laughing, kiki, and ha-ha with y'all. Bitch, I'm at home, laid up in my bed, in the fetal position, rocking back and forth, listening to sad love songs, contemplating life, okay? You don't seem too upset, Noah, that you just broke up with your boyfriend. Make it make sense. You so easily cheated and got bust down at the sex party. One. You so easily made out with dude right in the next room. Right, you know, in the bathroom where your boyfriend is in the next room. And three, now that y'all have basically broke up. Bitch, you over here chumming it up, you know, laughing, kiki, and dancing and shit like if the world is okay. Girl, you weren't ready for a relationship. You weren't here for it. You didn't deserve no it. See, I deserve a man like no one. You Noah don't deserve a man like Noah. Noah, I'm here. I'm here. Hey, Noah. Not Noah. Hey, Wade. You don't deserve a man like Wade, Noah. I deserve a man like Wade. Hey, Wade. I'm here for you waiting. That was the season finale, y'all. We'll be back. Now that season one is over, which was a phenomenal season. That was season one. Phenomenal season. Great season. 
great stuff. I love looking back at season one now, some 15 years later. We're about to be on to season two. <sighs> yes, let's get to it. That's all I got for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Let's get down in the comment section, y'all, like always. And let's talk and argue, argue, like we always say. Not argue, but argue. Argue about what we saw. That's all I got for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely.